Hello YouTube, Everton here. Today we're learning about closures. So a closure, according to the Swift documentation, it's a group of code that executes together without creating an EBIT function. Which means basically that in Swift, a closure is a special type of function without the function name. Let's see some examples. Let's say we have a variable called hello and set a closure. And the closure just prints hello. This closure executes like a function. So I can just call hello and it, you print hello just like a function right so what's the difference as you can see we don't need the fun keyword and we don't ne don't need to declare the function name this is the variable name okay and this is the block that executes closures can also have parameters like let's say name okay you may be wondering what this in means here in the closure. It's just a separator between the type and the body of the closure. All right. The closure can also have turn types. So I can set here hello to and you receive this returning type. We'll return here. Okay. You can see here it's returning hello Everton. All right, but the real power of closures comes when you use them as function parameters. So let's create an example here. It's a function fight products that receives a parameter that is a closure that takes a string and returns a string. A string. Okay. Let's say that returns nothing for now. So in this function, I can do some stuff, and only then called the closure all right so let's say with the name of the product here ipad pro so when you call this function you see that has a different syntax here the calling so you're receiving a product and here you can do whatever you want with the product see the real advantage here is that you make a line of communication you can have this function in one class and we can call it in another class and we make a communication system between two classes that's one use case all right and let's see an uh, example on the swift language let's say we have a list of names uh, everton john Anna. okay let's say i want to reverse the order of this of this list of names i can call the sorted function swift right and you can call here names dot sorted by as you can see the sorted function in swift takes a closure that takes two generic elements and returns a boolean and the function sorted returns a list of elements okay so if i ex execute here i can have string one string 2 and you s and we say s1 greater than s2 and here we have the reverse names here the list of elements right in the reverse order but this is not the only way of doing this you see function this disclosure has a type and this type as you can see takes two elements and returns a, a boolean i can create this function let's say backwards that takes one string two strings and returns a boolean you can say that returns the same thing this function i can pass this function as a parameter here sorted by backward backwards okay and we will do the same thing return the function the, the list in reverse order all right this is one way of doing it and also works with generic types as well if I pass here generic parameters, because as you remember, this sorted receives generic parameters. So it also works if I pass a generic parameters as long as it conforms to comparable, because I'm comparing two elements here. So it also works. I need to put in order here. Same thing. Also, we need to remember that Swift can infer types, right? You see, the function, the functions, when you create the function, this function signature is a type you see this signature here is a type so if i create here like a variable backward um, with a type string takes two strings string string and returns a boolean this type of this variable and the type of this function are the same we can check here type of backwards backward it's the variable and the type of the function type of backwards 
if you execute this backwards if you execute this you can see they're both the same type see so keep that in mind that a closure and a function both both have types this expression it's a type okay we also need to remember that swift can infer types so if Swift can infer types and this is a type, it can also infer the type of this. And closure has a specific notation for this. We can use dollar sign zero and dollar sign one. And this can go one, two, and three, and so on, depending on the implementation of the closure you are using. Filter map reduce, maybe I can explore is a little more in the future but here if you check the type of this is a string it's inferring because names is a list of strings all right so yeah in this case in specific there is also an even shorter way of doing this using just the operator it also works but this is a specific notation for this specific sorted not all of closures in Swift can work this way, all right? Now let's talk about trailing closures. Trailing closures is like when we have a parameter that is a, a closure, but it's the last parameter. Let's just take that find products example. So when I have here a category, takes a string and a completion. So a trailing closure just means that you're passing a closure in your last parameter okay so when we call this find products you pass a category say computers and you receive execute the closure here let's say product and you can do stuff here with the product okay so what's an escaping closure escaping closure you may have seen this dealing with networking call when we see that keyword escaping to declare escaping closure you just add at the function type escaping so what this means escaping when you add an escaping closure you are saying that your completion or your closure outlives the lifetime of the scope of the function so it will outlives even with this function finish all the stuff he did so that's why it's used when you make a, an, uh, an API call. So let's say, let's simulate here an API call. And I think after. So now plus 1.5 and you can put this here. So you can see here when I call the escaping version, let's put here returns an array of products. Products in. Let's say I return here a list of products. So when we execute here, you see that took a while to return. It's because I set this timer here, but it's just simulating an API call that is not immediate, right? So you will see when I remove this, what happens? The compiler will complain because here, escaping closure captures non escaping parameter completion. Because the compiler knows that this completion is escaping the scope of the function. It already returns and this didn't. So the compiler is smart enough to tell you when to, when to add escaping. All closures are non escaping by default. Okay? Another concept in closures, it's called auto closure and auto closure let's copy here call it auto an auto closure basically eliminates the need of calling the block here so to do this i just add auto closure okay and when we call the function in the completion i can just pass something to do you know but there's a caveat it cannot take in any parameters so this make makes a little cleaner we can have we have some examples on the swift language like the fatawero or assert assert as well as you can see here both uses auto closures and this pretty much wrap up everything we need to know about closures there's a lot more to learn but is about the use the use cases itself on many situations like as i said before communication between classes we need to be aware 
of memory leaks because closures are reference types and I didn't put here about a capture list and dealing with memory leaks because I think it's outside the scope of this video but I will make a more advanced video later okay but for today's video I think it's enough I hope you enjoy and I see you in the next one bye bye